Thanks so much for watching and have a successful week. All right, our video is finished. Today, I'm gonna to show you what happens after a shoot, and I'm gonna provide 10 things to consider if you're planning to publish your video content on LinkedIn. First things first, how are we gonna publish our video? Here's our options. We can create a blog post on our website and then take the URL and post it to LinkedIn. This is gonna get people to our website, awesome, but research shows that most people don't wanna leave LinkedIn to go watch your video on your website, no matter how awesome it is. Another option is we could upload the video to YouTube or Vimeo. The advantage here is that those links will actually play the videos in the LinkedIn feed so people don't have to leave, but there is a disadvantage. The LinkedIn algorithm, which is the computer code or equation that determines who sees what in their feed, uh, it gives a favorable advantage to video content that's uploaded natively. Native means that it's uploaded directly to LinkedIn. Native video on LinkedIn is a rather new feature. It changes frequently, and it doesn't have all the features yet that a more mature platform like Facebook offers. However, I want my video to have the best chance it can to be seen on LinkedIn, so I'm going native. One of the features lacking from native video uploads on LinkedIn is the ability to set your own thumbnail. The thumbnail is the image that shows up as the video loads or if it doesn't autoplay. Now I hope they'll add this feature in soon, but for the meantime, know that your thumbnail on a LinkedIn video that's natively uploaded is the first frame of the video. I suggest that you either make sure you look the way you want right when you turn on your camera or you use post-production and editing to control that first frame. We usually take a photo while we're shooting our video and then use Photoshop to add some titles to it and then we place that image using Premiere, the editing system that we use, in the first three frames of our video. Most people consume content on LinkedIn by scrolling through their feeds, and they're usually doing this in public places. For this reason, LinkedIn sets most video content to mute by default and requires users to click unmute if they wanna hear any audio. Now, if you're talking in your videos and you want people to understand what you're saying, consider allowing them to read along using captions and subtitles. Personally, I really struggle with captions because I know how valuable they are, but they really throw a wrench into my desire to have a really lean production schedule. Say we average about an hour for each video we create, well incorporating subtitles can double that amount of time. We're trying to incorporate captions into as many videos as we can, and when we do, we use an Adobe plugin for Premiere called Transcriptive. One of the problems with captions is that they can cover your video content and be fairly small if a user is viewing on a phone. Now, traditional video content is made for a computer display or a television, so it's created in a widescreen, more horizontal format, either 1920 by 1080 pixels for HD, or sometimes now for at a larger version of that same 16 by 9 ratio for 4K. However, with Instagram and now LinkedIn video, sometimes a square video format might make sense if you want to maximize the vertical space afforded to you in your post. Unfortunately, square video content is much harder to syndicate. So one of the ways I've been experimenting with this aspect ratio is I'll shoot my, my actual video in the traditional 16 by nine widescreen ratio, and, now, and then I'll embed it into a 1080 by 1080 square sequence, and I'll have the captions dropped below the video content, and I'll create an engaging title that will go above the video content. That way, if I want to use the traditional widescreen video, down the road, I can do so for other platforms. Now length is something you should consider no matter where you're publishing your video. Usually the shorter the better because our intention spans are so small, but I don't really get hung up on a set length for my videos. I more so try to focus on is the content great? Now I do know that if someone starts watching a video, there's a chance they're gonna drop off somewhere throughout the video. So I try to preload some of the best content at the front to engage them early and keep them hooked. If you're uploading natively to LinkedIn, know that there is a maximum limit currently of 10 minutes long. Last year when I interviewed Paul Nemshoff with Hayworth, it was a great interview, but it extended out beyond 10 minutes. So since we couldn't upload natively to LinkedIn, we uploaded to Vimeo and then created a blog post on our site and then posted that link to LinkedIn. And then we created a small short video as a teaser to the interview that we could publish natively in addition to that content. Unlike on other platforms, the description shows up before your video on LinkedIn. So use this opportunity to provide some context around your content. Use the at symbol to mention people and brands, use some hashtags, and know that after three lines in your description, LinkedIn requires users to hit a dot, 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 see more button to see the rest of your description. So you can make your description long, but 
front load those first three lines with the most important stuff. I've heard that the LinkedIn algorithm doesn't like it when you put a link in your description, but I can't validate that. I've also seen top LinkedIn content creators including their entire video transcript in the description. Others barely include a sentence. I'd suggest experimenting here and finding out what works best for you. I talked about using hashtags in your post description, but on LinkedIn, hashtags serve a unique purpose. Because there's no repository where you can go and see all of your video posts, it can become difficult to pull one up, especially if you post often. So I suggest creating a unique hashtag to help you do this. For example, with a lot of my recent posts, I've started using the hashtag BOS Workspaces and also hashtag Great Work Series. BOS Workspaces allows me to tie my content to our brand channel for our core brand BOS and hashtag Great Work Series, to my knowledge, is only used by me. So when I click on that hashtag or follow it, I can see all of my video posts and any instances where people shared my post. Sharing isn't the only way people can engage with your content on LinkedIn. They can like or comment on your posts or connect with and follow you. Now I'd recommend engaging with other people's content, but also with your own. If someone comments on your post, like and comment back. Increased engagement, especially shortly after you post content, is a great way to ensure it will show up in people's feeds. Now some content creators are experimenting with posting a question shortly after they publish their video in a comment. They're saying that that increases the levels of engagement. I'm trying this too, but I can't tell you yet whether it makes a difference. The whole reason I use LinkedIn is for the professional nature of the user base. Now the video analytics they provide don't include everything I'd like to see, but what they do have is very useful. I can see which companies, which positions, and which geographies are viewing my content. And I absolutely love the fact that I'm reaching my target demographics, target prospects, vendor partners, and customers. Finally, let's acknowledge that creating videos takes a lot of time. This is a long video because there's a lot to know. If you've got a great video, don't limit yourself to just LinkedIn. Consider syndicating that content out to other platforms. This is something that I'm gonna be focusing on doing a better job of in 2019. Currently, most of the video content we create for LinkedIn is repurposed and used as a blog post on either bos.com or workspace.digital. But I hope to expand that to Instagram, YouTube, maybe Facebook, and hopefully some third-party distributors in the coming months. I hope you found these suggestions useful. Keep in mind, it's January 2019, and after over eight months of publishing video content on LinkedIn, this is how I'm currently using the platform. But it's constantly changing, and with every update LinkedIn has, these suggestions could evolve. But for now, I'm confident if you put some of them into practice, your video publishing will be more effective. Thanks so much for watching. If you haven't already, connect with me for more content. And as always, have a successful week.